I want to talk about this because this is something that's been on my mind. It's something that I've heard um, a little clip of Russ on DJ Academic Show kind of talking about this. There's been this constant weird conversation going around in hip hop, especially regarding blackballing, right? And for the most part, you know, you guys will know what blackballing is in terms of, you know, um, establishments or corporations basically putting the kaput on people's careers um, to the point where they're not able to sustain themselves, not able to be successful they were prior. And I guess the baby's claim is that off the back of his new album that just came out called Baby on Baby, which I'm surprised he's kind of standing behind because to me it sounds rushed. And I'm and I'm and I'm somebody who's open minded. I'm not somebody that's kind of gonna sit here and say I'm a the baby fan, but I'm also open minded enough to kind of listen to someone's music and be able to discern why people like it and why some people wouldn't like it. So I'm going you know, whatever it may be. So I listen to Do Your Baby and Baby with an open ear and it just feels rushed. It feels like a mix up. It feels like something that he put out in the hopes of just, you know, ticking off or crossing off another album on his um list of albums he needs to turn in for his label it didn't feel like a project he'd worked on with a lot of full a lot of foresight there wasn't a real theme in it it's just a collection of his best quote-unquote songs and he put them on an album and he called it baby and baby 2 to kind of link back to the other album baby and baby but it wasn't good in my opinion it just wasn't so to stand behind a blackballing thing off of that is weird and also i felt like he didn't really promote baby and baby 2 that long there wasn't a big lead up to it it wasn't like you know usually when you're an artist and you're flipping and putting an album you have this big lead up you go on radio shows you do interviews you do podcasts you maybe do a live stream or two but there's a rollout that you do when you're a new album and you didn't do any of that for all for baby and baby so i don't really know why this whole blackballing thing has happened but anyway the baby's been speaking out, I guess, and basically letting people know that he's not happy with his album sales and he doesn't care also, which is the classic thing people do that are really sensitive, right? Um, especially if you're somebody who's got such a hard and kind of gangster reputation as Flipping the Baby does, right? Somebody also, you know, we all know he doesn't take any shit, but he's clearly still an artist deep down. So if your numbers aren't as good as your previous numbers, you're clearly going to feel away about it regardless of how you're going to try and maybe say it or how you're going to try and twist the words in public you're gonna feel something for sure so anyway it continues this article from complex that says baby's recent album baby and baby garnered low sales um than his previous project and charlotte rapper thinks it's because he's being blackballed the release of his project to more to projected to move sixteen thousand units in the first week in contrast to baby's previous solo record 2002 blame it on the baby debuted at number one on the billboard or 200 and moved 124,000 album equivalent units per billboard still the baby was wasn't sweating and tepid progressions and gave himself a pat on the back so this is a screenshot from his um uh instagram story that says not bad for a blackboard baby and it's a picture of the baby selling he's saying you know being basically ironically and sarcastically saying you know he's happy he sold sixteen thousand a week um the baby's response comes shortly after academics argued the same thing and blamed apple music and ebra darden for a blackboard and a rapper and this is obviously um uh, what's his face? This is obviously a, a tweet from DJ Academics that says as follows The baby's last project in 2020, Blame on the Baby, sold 124,000 first week. His new project, after being blackballed by Ebro, Apple Music is scheduled to do less than 20k. Now you understand what my Ebro convo. DSPs control who is hot and who is not. Fall out of favor with them, you're done. And obviously, um, um, Ebro um, tweeted in response Apple Music is not the only platform. Based on his dummy's logic, the baby should be doing well on the platform he works for. Is it? The, the, the. Anyway, so you know, it's not so toys, whatever. So for me personally, I think this is a ridiculous conversation, um, because number one, I never got the feeling, because near yeah, the, the reason why I think the backbone conversation is, is is annoying. First of all, just to kind of piggyback off the back of this, is I think that it's, there's a lot of importance being placed on DSPs, right? And I'm somebody who kind of. In general, I'm not really the biggest fan of gatekeepers, right? I, I think all that sort of stuff is really, really um, annoying and kind of stifles creativity and opportunity. And what the internet gave us is the ability to basically, you know, leapfrog the gatekeepers and just give the music or give the con or put the content out there for the fans. And if you do, if you're able to connect with people out there, they will find you in some way, shape, or form, and you'll be able to garner a fan base and be able to support yourself through your artwork. That's been the great thing about the advent of the internet 
and social media right but this kind of heavily heavy reliance on on playlists and and streaming platforms and stuff feels like a weird psyop from the streaming platforms to asset to kind of um restore or to cement their authority on the industry again because it was waning for a long time the fact that you can upload your own songs you know and submit them to places like spotify and apple in the first place and get out his profile and streaming basically if you wanted to on paper you could have every little thing that every artist has that you kind of idolize at your fingertips also right in terms of the tools that you use to kind of spread and push out their music but obviously it feels like also because the record labels have kind of now got in bed with some of these big streaming platforms by investing in them or having partnerships to allow them to put their music on their streaming platforms in the first place they are now through like backdoor psyop ways trying to uh, re-establish their authority dominance and control by having this weird black ball conversation thing that's going to strike fear in the heart of artists coming up that they shouldn't fall foul of digital streaming platforms because they too could end up like the baby and so 124 one week and then of course drop off the face of the earth with the next plat with the next album coming through but the reason why i don't like this is because kind of to touch on um russ's kind of comments on it is that in general what this does is that it admits for the most part that this over reliance on this over emphasis on numbers sorry first week sales streams and all this sort of nonsense that could easily be manipulated has essentially hurt the music industry and artists in general because artists are now chasing these numbers and but they're not chasing or trying to cultivate a fan base they're not trying to perfect their craft they're not trying to improve their live shows they're not trying to dig deep into their psyche or into their history and kind of pull out from a kind of deeper more interesting place it's all the same regurgitated nonsense microwavable disposable stuff that we don't care about and clearly the evidence is showing in the numbers because one minute you're hot next minute you're not but also overall to touch on what point russ said a really good point that i think kind of stresses it and kind of makes it more poignant to me and what i'm kind of going through and what i kind of want to strive for he said the following on his um twitter that he kind of put out they said this no one is blackboard right this is a screenshot taken from his account i just want to give my two cents on something in the industry no artist is blackboard unless they cut off your wi-fi remove your social media accounts and take your music off the streaming platforms you are not blackboard if you're famous i can still tell your fans hey i'm putting out music then you're not blackboard fans will listen to your music or they won't it's that simple also if you're a famous artist and you need playlist in your orders for you to your fans to listen to your music how real are your fans why do they support you why don't they support you regardless we're giving too much credit to power and power to dsps and not in a power to to us the artists and the fans i know for me as long as i can tell my fans i'm putting out music i'm straight i'm not entitled to any playlist nor do i need them for my fans to listen to me that's why they're dot dot my fans and i definitely agree with him because i think in this event maybe you could say or in this circumstance maybe you can say both points are right maybe the dj academics point about overall there is too the, the the dsps babies basically have too much power in terms of the things that they can kind of put in the front of us the front of the home page the things they can feature on certain playlists there is that right and there's obviously some platforms they promote their own playlists ahead of other user generated players or stuff that's kind of come from you know outside of the company that makes complete sense obviously because it's their thing i get it but overall this is music especially should always be about the artistry itself should always be about the, the art connecting with the fans in some meaningful way and i feel like for whatever reason especially in hip-hop there's been this real um chase and first for numbers everyone's gonna chase the biggest bag the biggest first week sale it's all big it's all ownership it's all big grandiose things but at the end of the day there's less real talk about conversations around the artists like i've just seen a performance of kodak black on the bt awards performing super gremlin great outfit on the stage show looks you know interesting to say the least you know not really my thing but i get it and the performance was absolutely trash. He had the vocal track playing in the background. So basically him screaming over an MP3 of the song that you can really listen to on, on flipping any streaming platform. So what's the point of you standing on the stage and performing? So the performance was terrible because of that. It kind of took you away from the performance altogether. But you don't hear those people talking about how oh, I've been working on my live show. Here's me rehearsing. Here's me, you know, you know trying to rework or trying to, you know, um, 
what's that word called? Trying to reverse engineer some of my previous tracks to try and get them to be instrumentals to play in live shows. All this sort of stuff you don't really hear. It's all just chasing first week sales. Why are my streams not this? Why this? Why that? Why that? And I feel like in general, like I said, the art has suffered. Fans have suffered. Or maybe mostly the artists have suffered because they have no real understanding of who their actual fans are because they've been chasing virality and relevance. And the babies may be a big, big example of that. He wanted to be the biggest rapper of all. It kind of he kind of popped during the pandemic. It felt like for the most part he was everywhere and everywhere at once. And then also the the kind of elephant in the room is also the fact that no one really wants to mention the guy is not the most likable person in the world, is he? Let's be honest, he's not very likable. And I think one thing that we know Russ to be at one point was unlikable in his career. And one thing I think he proved, and most people proving now that especially with podcasters and people online like YouTubers and stuff. If you have your own fan base, it's essentially impossible for you to get blackboard and cancelled. Impossible. You can always have a career because your fans are always going to rock with you. And we've seen it happen to countless YouTubers, countless influencers, countless content creators, especially during the pandemic when people were bored and were saying crazy shit. If you had actual fans, it didn't matter. Like Molly May said what she said about the 24-hour thing. It didn't change a dot because people love that girl. So they didn't care that she said what she said and it came across disingenuous or whatever it may be. They loved it. Same goes for the King kardashian work comments you can't cancel people who have actual fans who watch support view and buy what they do and i feel like with the baby what he's suffering from is that he never cultivated his fan base and also during the time that he was famous or during the time he was popping up you know really really in a big level he did lots of things that people didn't like and i never understood that thing as well with kim with the baby because he's obviously somebody that a lot of girls like he obviously kind of you know leans into that as well he's not i, I don't know i, I kind of get the feeling like he should maybe have more he should probably be he should probably have a fan base that looks similar to like a tyler creators right then then a fucking make mills really if you think about his music you think about his videos his personality and the way he looks he should maybe have more caucasian fans and more girls that you show in general but i don't think publicly feuding with your baby mother with whoever's right or wrong i don't care but just the, the the optics of it public feuding of her on instagram live calling her names and stuff belittling her all these things i don't think it enamors yourself to with like young girls it just doesn't and i don't even know what danny lay's appeal is to young girls who knows she might be their fucking rihanna i have no idea but i don't think it helped so that coupled with the music not really improving that much or not really going to new interesting places which i don't think it's a bit of a misnomer you know you have to create new music to you know but keep evolving whatever but still him not being likable um he basically having no fans because he didn't really cultivate them he just kind of rode off for the back of having viral hits that kind of blew and not really people caring about his albums for the most part i think all of that kind of played into it personally for me i think so especially when it comes to the u.s side of things that definitely played a part maybe he'd be fine in europe and whatever but these artists don't really care about coming to europe or doing you know or coming to or settling in europe and becoming a european act they want to be a star where they're at so that makes complete sense but this whole blackballing conversation is absolutely bizarre it really really is but then also i was thinking where it could be applied the whole blackballing thing and i think is a more interesting conversation to have is what happened with tory lanes and megan the stallion now let's not get into who you believe shot who did it happen or didn't happen let's not get into that the issue i've always had with the tory lanes and megan the stallion thing is the um is the unfairness of it optically right into again not knowing anything that happened wherever it may be but essentially you've got a he said she said issue yes you can sit there and say believe all the victims whatever but at the core of it it is a he said she said right we don't know what happened in that car we have no idea we know they had a prior relationship we know they all went to that same place together they left together something occurred in between them leaving and in between them quote unquote getting home that you know well, around the shooting that basically led to all this drama we're having at the moment but we haven't got down to the truth yet and most of it's because of the pandemic put like a kabush on court cases and things get getting pushed back bloody blah blah blah, blah. But we're finally gonna have a resolution i think i think in november i think the update's meant to be i don't really too sure but regardless of it what i really kind of disliked at the time was everybody essentially running to support megan but not even support in terms of she got shot most of the support in terms of the industry stuff like the awards and whatever it may be and the adulations and the, the performances it just felt really 
disingenuous and fake because they didn't feel like it was coming from a real place. They weren't really crediting her music. They were just crediting the fact that this person might be a victim. We want to uplift them, want to make them feel good about themselves and feel like they're kind of supported in this industry. Here, here you go. And I felt, in my opinion, that that was just a bad move overall because what if it transpires that what she said didn't happen? Or maybe that there's a slight, you know, changing of the narrative whatever it may be right there's whatever it may be it just didn't feel right and even if it, it didn't it did happen i would have just liked to have seen more fairness in terms of okay they went through a crazy situation we're trying to get to the bottom of it in the courts let's have them both sit out sit this one out in terms of you know let's just both take a step back from being in the public and stuff and doing all these performances and going to the grammys and winning them all this. let's both take a step back pause our career you know, do what we can do on the side. And then whenever the case is over, then we start popping back out and doing what we're doing or even the industry doing it. But the fact that one person got all the awards and then one person was told to basically sit on a bench for the whole time and not get any kind of mainstream love, it just felt a little bit weird um, in general. And I think that is what you would call some version of blackballing. Even though Toy has his own fans, he was still able to do shows and stuff. That is a version of blackballing, like in terms of like, you know, it didn't matter how good his albums were, in the times of you know there being grammys he was never going to win one he could have submitted as much as you want they were never going to pick it never going to win it so that is a bad thing and of course if the fans listen to it and there's a biggest hit on the streets and stuff they wouldn't acknowledge it either so that's a bit that i kind of get annoyed about and i think it's really really unfair and there's this clip here taken from dj Kenemis's podcast where T tory lanes kind of speaks about his hesitancy to talk about the topic at all and why he doesn't feel like you know he should because he essentially as it says in the quote is facing 24 years in prison next month so he doesn't really have the depression being a guy he doesn't have the luxury to you know kind of p politic about it or you know throw subs about it online for the most part because if he does it's going to hurt his case and i think he was doing it at the start to be you know to be brutally honest he was being a little bit cheeky in the beginning you know so certain things in the albums that were said and whatnot certain indirect here and there but it seems like for the most part ever since he got hit with that is it like a restraining order or something by making or something on the lines he's completely shut up he's not really said a single word let everybody say what they want to say and he's going to have his day he's day in court and so we're going to see what the outcome is but this is a this is a video clip taken from dj kenemis's uh, podcast called uh off the record where they talk about it a little bit you know the narrative can be against me but it's the narrative that's against me and it's me like you're saying it's me not defending myself in a lot of instances, in a lot of situations, what a lot of people don't realize is one thing connects to another. And when you start talking about one thing, people then connect it to something else. And sometimes, most of the time, those things have no correlation to each other. And so because of that, it's like you avoid it in, in, in its entirety because it's not the time and place. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's just wisdom. That's not about me trying to be too cool or me being like, yo, I'm too cool to give y'all the answer or I'm so patient or I'm so resilient or I'm so da 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 No, guys, I am in an open case and maybe I make this shit look really beautiful, but I'm facing 24 yeah, you years. Look, you don't seem too stressed, man. Like, I'm facing 24 years. I make this shit look beautiful, don't I? But, uh, guys, I am actively facing 24 years next month. Wow. And it's funny that you have to explain that sort of sort of people in plain language, but that's essentially the 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 place that he's at. And even if this is the thing, even if he is guilty, it's probably best, especially in the court of public opinion, to just keep your mouth closed. Even if you are guilty, because you know how much the court of public opinion can actually influence legit court cases. So if you actually are guilty of shooting somebody, especially a woman and you're a black dude, you kind of should keep your mouth quiet. And if you're not guilty, again, keep your mouth shut. But like I said, I feel like that was real blackballing. The fact that Megan was winning Grammys for stuff that she shouldn't have won Grammys for, you know, talented girl, don't get me wrong, but the album that she won, it's like, this, like come on guys, this, the awards in general were just like crazy what is going on here overcompensating for somebody that you feel like you know was victimized or was in a terrible situation but you know you don't need to do that or at least have some parity if she gets one he gets one too but that obviously wasn't going to happen so that's where i feel like real blackballing exists in that kind of capacity but again you know maybe i'm kind of talking out my ass when it comes to those sort of topics